Well, hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Storytelling with Pastor Steve. Uh, missed you. It's been a week since we've been together, but now you've invited me back to your living room or wherever it is that you're watching. And I've got another banjo song for you. I hope you're not getting tired of my banjo yet. And it's a song that made me think a little bit of the story that I'm going to tell, uh, because I'm going to tell a story about winged creatures, different winged creatures. And so I'm going to play a song first. It's called I'll Fly Away, which is not about winged creatures, but I just thought the title fit, and that was a song that I knew. I only pick out books that I enjoy, so I hope you enjoy them too. Stella Luna, it's about winged creatures, just like I thought about with I'll Fly Away, but this one in particular is a baby bat, and the baby bat makes friends with some other winged creatures, and uh, we'll see that some things are kind of funny, and some things are kind of new and different, and Stella Luna has a lot to learn about herself and uh, and about her new friends as well. So let's follow along with some of her adventures. On a warm, sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her young baby. This is Stella Luna's mother, flying, carrying Stella Luna. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. That's what she's doing right there. Uh-oh, one night though, as mother bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, mother bat tried to escape. But the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings uh, were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. Oh no. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. And one twig was enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, that's what bats do, she clutched the thin branch trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Oh, where's she gonna go? Plump. Stella Luna landed head first in a soft, downy nest. Oh, perfect landing. Startling the three baby birds who already lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight outside of the nest and listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap, one of the baby birds. Well, I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. So the three birds are Flap, Flitter, and Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things that Mama Bird brought. Ugh. Finally, the little bat could bear it no longer. And she climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. 
flop in dropped. Can you see it? A big green grasshopper. Oh, Stella Luna never had that kind of meal. She was just used to fruit. Well, Stella Luna, Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all, night, all day and slept all night. Just the opposite of bats. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Oh, look at the others. Once when Mama was a bit away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. And when Mama Bird came back, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. <clears throat> she cried, get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Sounds like a concerned Mama. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into the nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised, and she ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night, and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should, even though Stella Luna was a bat. All the babies grew quickly, and soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told him it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Hey, their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. Oops, not so easy. How embarrassing. Embarrassing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, not so gracefully dead, but Stella Luna did her best. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself, then no one will see how clumsy I am. She was going to practice. That's a good idea. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We'd better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed, so she hung by her thumbs. Oh, that must have been hard, and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Oh, what's this that's coming? Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, oh, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. Well, you're hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat and hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Well, Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Well, wrong for a bird, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. <laughs> you ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. Oh, how very strange, they all murmured. Uh, wait, wait, let me... Let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she said. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, said Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. Look how happy they are. What a wonderful reunion they're having. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. You can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into the trees. 
Oh, we're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Wow, how wonderful to be able to do that. But soon the bats found a mango tree. Oh, I love mangoes. Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug again as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip Flitter and Flap. Well, the next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on their way. And as the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. And so the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We'll fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Ah, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. And Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the branch above them. She saved her friends. Well, we're safe, said Stella Luna, and then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. Well, we wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time, thinking about all of that. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so alike, wondered Pip. Well, I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. And that's the story of Stella Luna and all her adventures. Thanks for joining me again for story time with Pastor Steve. Keep those cards and letters coming, boys and girls. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.